four currency pairs here to trade on this demo account. And I went with the euro dollar, the uh, pound to the dollar, and the dollar to the CAD, and the Australian to the dollar. Uh, these guys get a fair amount of news, and they're really great for the chop technique. And this is a nice little uh, triangle here, but I, I don't think that, um, you know, there's a, there's a way to trade the break out of that to make money. I probably s suppose that would be the juicy trade just because it's been under this compression point. And the same here, the drift down. And, the, the, and this uh, explosion here, and then there's um, this vapor fill. So if you're going to ride four trains, you're looking for this vacuum to form. You just start putting your buy stops in for the uh, risky trades. And for the uh, less risky trades, or just the, it's a pure money management system, you just have um, grids that just come in every, say, four hours, and it lays um, limits, you know. Uh, the, but the uh, only criteria is that the deeper you go, the more orders you put in. So uh, say you put a uh, buy limit here. Uh, last known top, uh, kind of a middle of the road. Um, you know, it, it's definitely the middle of the road of this without that looking like a swastika. I just watched these uh, Holocaust deniers, and I think I just ruined my brain now. Everything looks like a swastika. Uh, but, yeah, Swastika Trader, that's uh, the other DVD I'm going to release. I don't hope that does well. Uh, here's a breakout that just was so risky, but, you know, if you had a buy stop there, you're risking a lot of pips, but I guess you could say, well, look at, you know, this thing moves a lot of pips, too. Canadian's very choppy, and uh, anytime it could pause for um, 10 pips, in four hours, something's up, especially when... Even the moving averages are starting to flatten out. So something's up. Here, um, just too quiet of a walk down. I mean, all these all these soft landings have explosive um, exits. Even this uh, nice, calm walk-up had somewhat of a pullback. Of course, it's only coming back to the last known top. It's just dumb stuff. But here, it's going to be buy limits, right? All next week here, more buy limits here. You know, this is like constant inventory um, rebalancing. Your sell limits are always going to be on the edge. Right now, your buy limits are here, here, all the way to Memphis because, uh, and I saw this happen once on the dollar yen, back when the dollar yen used to trade like uh, down in the 80s and stuff. And same kind of thing. This was a uh, actually a uh, the very end right here. The lowest low on the dollar yen uh, was when the Bank of uh, Japan came out and went out about three pips lower. And it was about eight o'clock at night, Eastern Standard Time, and I saw an explosion like this, and I thought, "Oh yeah!" And I, I, I just, of course, only got out at here because uh, it was this exact pattern. But this would be like, a, yeah, it's like a four-hour chart. Or it could have been a daily chart, but it was insane explosion, and obviously this was waiting. This was just a um, ticking time bomb, and even these attempts were, you know, tradable. And but these limit, these limit orders, is is the key, um, because if you're getting in on limits down here, and you've got the buy stops running on top, you got the best of both worlds for all of these currency pairs. So you just manually drop them, and I guess you don't want to auto-drop unless you put in a bad order, which would be a, a non-structure order, would just be like, I'm just going to put a buy stop in right now. If you put a trailing buy stop on the bar, then you're going to get this um, situation where you might get a bad, you might think it's like you're overpaying, but... In other words, the entry of the the system dictates um, the risk. So if you don't wait for a small bar, you're just going to take more heat, but the probability of making money, um, or at least seem a little bit, because you could add a 10 pip stop on this and they were just going to smash you out. Like when the news comes out, forget that order. So you have multiple strategies. You have a 
small order that has wide stops and you have a big order that has tight stops, but maybe they're all worth the same amount of money. Of course, that gets, gets down to the fact that when people say the market dictates your stop, well, I guess, but if you mentally framed your life in terms of I could handle $30 of loss per five minutes, you know, you have to come up with a number and it's almost like you decided that um, you're going to go really fast in the car and you're just going to go without airbags and you're just going to be sm smiling, right? Smiling at the dashboard. You had to do the math of what, how fast you can get to before it's going to be a dental issue. So you have to, I guess, decide that up front. And that's, that's all I'm saying is, you know, and it doesn't really matter whether you're a you can be a trend trader and be a, um, a limit trader. I don't get why you would want to join one team, but I get the fact that if you get one thing executed right, you just keep repeating that item. You know, it's like it's like the uh, crematorium I was just reading about. Uh, you know, they they got it down. You know, they they figured that out. Just keep on rolling it over. And the thing is, is that in these markets, I guess that's what it is. Now, if it's too much. You know, um, if you trade mechanically, you can trade probably um, all 22 currencies, right? But you're really saying that I'm a mechanical trader that has a risk ratio, and I don't care about... Um, you could really um, struggle to find a Gartley on this four-hour cat, or is it just me? Now, if I go out to uh, uh, even a broader view, does this look not like the messiest mess mess you ever saw? And could you really just not see that this is a a, a triangle down here? Is that really um, even possible that you can't pick that out visually, this triangle or just a wedge? So, and then of course, the problem here is that on the dollar can Canadian, Okay, we, we could all probably get a nice triangle or flag, or this is the um, this is the flagpole, and this is the uh, there's a probably an RSI reversal in here. Whatever it is, this is just basically loss of uh, volatility and um, pausing at a price where nobody seems to be able to pull it either way. And then finally, the decision's made, and the the, the jury's in. So this first four hours. When it hits this breakout point, some people, for them, that's the weekly or daily, and they're like, holy crap. And there's all the people that are short, this whole thing, who couldn't uh, figure out that this was, uh, this triangle here, this is all critical, and this is, this is why even the people that sold there, or the people, you know, it's like a, um, when we're in a range mode like this, which, 80% of the time you're in a range. I mean, how often do you see this move? How often do you see, you know, find one move on here that is a clean move. A lot of this stuff, uh, even if you sold here, this is a painful ride down. You are never really in, I mean, you have to be bailing here. I don't say you have to be. I have to be bailing there. You can do what you want. But... You know, the more I look at these charts, the more I don't see any Gartleys anymore. I guess the romance is gone for me in these markets. It's literally just nothing but, oh, yeah, I'll buy a Chevy for $5,000, right? Um, sure, how much do you want for your uh, car? Yeah, uh, you just put a put a uh, order down here and just, if they never come down there, of course, the effort of putting that order in would be for some people, would be a loss of money. It'd be like making up a bunch of art that nobody's going to buy, but you just spent, like, uh, how long placing all that stuff? And that's, that's to me, what it's about is just a balance point between the effort and the payback, because who is going to sit there and place itty-bitty orders on all of this stuff and put all these orders in and everything? Well, you know... That's all it really is, is order placement. In the end, there, you, you can really overexcite your brain with grandiose, um, you know, things. But in the end, you know, what this market's doing, if, if this thing can um, go nowhere for, tw for 20 hours, in essence, really go nowhere, 
uh, you know, trapped in a, a 20, 30 pip range. Is that, can you make a living off of that? I mean, this is the question. Can you make a living off of nonsense? Sell limits at the last known resistance. Wow, they just keep on, you know, grabbing it and back, grab it and back. I mean, this whole time, how are trend traders making any? I just always wondering. And then, of course, they'll always point out that they got in here and they got out there. But I just don't know how they psychologically, I don't care if it's a dollar or if it's anything. Who wants to be losing money? Um, you mean... Like, you could have got out here and you tied up all that margin and all that crap and waiting to get to here. When you could have reloaded down here, I mean, you've got a week to get in on that trade. I just don't get, I guess if you don't have time to get to the platform, and this is, um, I guess if you're not a scalper, right? You're not just looking for that thing to just get tagged and bagged and ripped. I guess you're looking at this thing and you got all the moving averages and you got an Ikamushu out here somewhere, I suppose, right? I mean, there's no end to it. There's no end to how you can superimpose your belief system on these on these charts. But, well, I just had to, dr I had to really take it down to the dry mode because, you know, in the end, it's all just about, it's just about um, getting in and out of these things with money. Don't, I can't even imagine another way to think about it and here's the one hour view if you went down to this and you could see uh, back two days and this is the ATR essentially for two days so it's really it's very choppy here and really not going anywhere this explosion totally destroyed the the ATR values here but the pound is not as wild so if you're gonna run say a grid that buys uh, logarithmically like um, down where you're just getting in say every, everything from here to here but it's the the it's either a bigger order down here but it's better to put in just another order so you have a ton of orders down here just like you would have a um, an order here for the obvious where they're gonna go grab these uh, bulls who probably look at this on a longer time frame and it's like going up or some nonsense. Uh, yeah, see, it's going up. So what are they going to do? We're going to drive this thing down and grab everybody's stop and rip it up. Duh! This is this is what it's about. And I guess people want to um, get a moving average crossover system and you're like, yeah, I just got a signal to go along. And uh, you can still get... Uh, whiplash here especially if you're um and then this may be too long for you to get paid this is sunday night and this is um big rally up into that pull back here but this is uh this is when it gets frisky you know um getting in here you're taking 20 pips of heat if you didn't wait for that pullback and here you know this is brutal uh it's right at the end of the day probably news or some garbage Here's a nice uh, let the cell stop stack up. Whoosh, just complete mechanical stupidity entry. And even here, um, if you're buying the one, the 10 pip bars, and you just have buy stops and sell stops, you only got a 10 pip window of loss. You know, one hour chart. And uh, it's, just, it's just dumb. You know, sell stops finally get hit on your one hours, although you're taking a big risk here. You know, uh, classic risk systems. We're gonna look at the high of that and want to put a stop up there. And here it's just gonna be um, kind of like a, not a ton of money, but I guess you could claim that. Oh, look! I told you it was going down. Now oh, that's starting to look uh, strange to me now. But this is all the territory, and I'm just thinking, yeah, next week, obviously, buy stops, you know, I mean, buy limits always down here in some crazy pattern. And we wake up in the morning, and it happens over and over again that if you place these grids in just uh, for starters, and then you can always come back on top. It's kind of like uh, painting a painting, you know, you have to do a background wash. And then you come in with the detail stuff, right? So you would just basically plunk down a grid of orders right off the bat just so you don't feel afraid to place orders 
in a random matter out in outer space. I mean, in the end, the idea that you're going to use the tip of the Gartley to place one ticket, that's like you going and buying one lottery ticket. At least the guys that are buying uh, 500 lottery tickets a year, I, I, I give them a break. I mean, the odds are slightly more in their favor. Definitely, you know, here you go, right? And so, um, you know, they're taking the edge off a little bit. And uh, here, it's the same stupidity, like just putting in orders to buy anything below here. You know, you just, anything below here, I'm always in. And they just pay on this Canadian. That's like, I mean, it's limit trader's dream. Breakout trader's dream too, but you got to wait for the, and it's very, uh, you know, these breakouts here are, are just so hyper dramatic. Uh, and all it's doing is trapping the bulls on that for that window of say 10, 15 pips. And the thing is, when you, when you realize that they're just going to crush it all the way back to here, you only have to wait an hour to get paid. Or two hours max, maybe, right, on a one-hour chart. But look at this. Um, this is when a robot would, a trend bot, would just fall in love with the market here. Problem is, is at this point, it becomes a um, domestic violence issue, you know. And it becomes a little bit... Uh, more like wow that was uh, that was long but not I think they stopped me <laughs> it becomes very treacherous but the one hour chart I can get my brain around that I don't want to go past an hour because um, certainly you can come to the platform uh, for just the to see if there's a quiet bar here's the uh, the one hour pound um, you know, when this thing was off the rails, uh, Friday they were doing like a um, distribution or a reaccumulation. So it's either going up or down from here, obviously. But geez, you know, this is this is stupid, stupid easy money. Um, if you have in your mind that you have a 30 pip stop, it's your max stop. It's that simple. Here, your buy stops, you would have been stopped out. Or maybe you go for 50 max, 50 pip stop max, but you're looking to make 100. When news comes out, think about putting a small order with a 100 pip stop to make 200 pips, so your ratios always double your money. You know, you just pepper the whole screen with that crap. So you're risking 10 to make 20, you're risking 8 to make 16. You set your gauge to the market, then you bring your tool in. And um, or if you psychologically are looking for a dollar amount, you would just pre-adjust all your tickets so that when you went to the drop screen, you're grabbing something that you know is worth ten dollars, whether it's a hundred pip stop on a one k or it is a um, you know you're going to go through the mini to the to the standard lot, but I, I don't think you'd want to go past like. Um, a thousand dollars only because if you're looking to make a thousand dollars which it seems like a decent amount of money you're just going to place a bunch of one thousand dollar tickets on the screen and just let them you know let them happen because you'll be in a 25k and be completely out of that trade completely flat and you've got other orders to trade the other direction so you're completely um bi-directional you don't care and you just the only rule set is that when the market's quiet you're gonna have to delete the orders that are in other words if you're doing stops you'd have to have those delete themselves with within four hours otherwise you're gonna get trapped in some stupid um, like when the market's tanking here if you drop, you're putting a buy stop on the top of every one of these guys here, you figure, yeah, but you know, it's too. There's that's the that's the only the first time, and they kind of trap and pull back. So that's a little bit of a. That's not a great entry. Um, it's better to have a, a quiet walk down buy stop, boom. You, you know, you're you're made money there. Or, and you got trapped if you let your um, sell stops last all day long you got trapped uh, 
because that first breakout was taking out the day and that's when they trapped the bears and ripped it back up. So, you know, at this point, your uh, buy stop system would get trapped here for five pip entry, but here, if you let these three bars, let their stops um, still exist for entry, and this would be like, okay, this would be like the late confirmation entry, but if you don't want to have the, you know, it really depends if you're going to stand there every 15 minutes and hit a button. If you do that, then you're probably on the 15-minute chart. But if you imagine this as being a 15-minute chart, and you just keep on placing those orders, and you're also placing the, um, the buy limit orders, so everything from here to here you have a whole grid of limits so you get to 100k real quick and um if you're sticking with this mechanical entry as these buy stops are stacking up you, you get starting to get filled here and these would have to be 50 um or 100 pip entries so maybe you have one swing trade per week inside there but the problem is if you if you say close all profits you're going to take off your long term if you're really going to trade this in a swing traders uh, concept where you do have a 50 pip stop on so you buy uh, right here with a 50 pip stop now my screen's uh acting up if you buy right here, here, and here, and they all have 50 pip stops. This one here uh, makes the 100. This one here makes the um, the 100 with the 50 pip stop, and this one here gets wiped out. So, but it, it's price over time, so you're not constantly, and you're actually, if you don't buy at the market, if you just stick with letting the market come to you, um, and you don't even put buy stops in here on top, but that would be the almost like buying at the market because you know at some point it's going to back up like a gorilla on you. And when it fills all the way to here, from a psychological standpoint, and you see it flagged out there because a lot of people are like, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that money. I mean, they just made this much, and all they had to do is buy this double bottom. It's stupid. And obviously, this will be a, a, a possible retest zone. So you have a labyrinth of orders down here. It buys this whole zone, and it cashes out up into here, ideally. And certainly, you should be out seventy percent, seventy percent of the position by here. Uh, because, come on, it's the middle of the road. You know, markets just aren't going to give you all the money you think that they're going to give you. But if you're on uh, for pairs like this. What do you care? You just made money on this trade. While this trade, they should all make money. You should be able to place, hand place, without grid trading it. I mean, if you just, you can't commit too much of the account to pure grid trading, like just throwing in a, a moron grid. But you can, uh, if conditions warrant, like here I would do it. I'd have a buy and sell limits uh, here. And they really um, scalp. They can be scalps, actually. You don't have to be 50 pip stops on everything, and that's that's the key. You you, you want a complete diversification, and uh, probably want to get like uh, a broker for each uh, strategy. So you have, like about 10 brokers really in the end. That's how you really do it because you don't want to have a um, broker go out of business on you, and you had uh, say buy limits sitting here, and they sweep through this thing and it cashes out, and you wake up with money. And the account, um, but your other account's not doing that psycho trade. But you'll see that that's that's where all the money's at because um, you know as soon as you break out any tool other than just what you gut feeling you see, then I just can't imagine. But of course I can't imagine I would be looking at just a bar chart in the end because it just gave up on. Every time I see one of these extrapolated um, fantasy charts, I just see horror of uh, the um, the kind of uh, I don't know. So yeah, I got my um, 
my old Joe, Joe Ross book out here. And I got 150 bucks into this puppy. And I'm looking through the end here of this book, and um, I'm reading the... Uh, actually reading it only because I spent 150 on it. But he's got a bunch of... Uh, it's written like... I mean, seriously, this guy must have published it out of his house. But he's got some grace. Uh, and it says, Concerning laziness. If you are lazy, learn a lesson from the ants. Learn from their, their ways to be wise. Because even though they have no one over them to make them work, yet they labor hard all summer gathering food for the winter. Lazy people don't use tools at their disposal, but the diligent make good use of them. <laughs> Where do they find them? I don't know. This is going to be 150 bucks for this. The lazy are full of excuses. I can't go to work. If I go outside, I might meet a lion in the street and get killed. Yeah, you know what? It's a rough neighborhood, so... I don't know. Anyways, no charge for the uh, bad, um, lame uh, literature. Anyways, that's my uh, two cents. Uh, I don't know what to say. Trading's stupid. Dumb people make money.